Hi everyone, welcome back to I Love My STEM Career. Uh, it's a two-day event taking place over today and tomorrow, and today we're in the Nerve Centre in Derry, and tomorrow we're going to be in the Ormo Baths in Belfast, and we are <laughs> highlighting uh, cool STEM careers um, for young people who are watching. So I want to thank everyone who is involved, Starticus, NI Science Woo! Festival, the venues, uh, Pulsar, NI Online Hub for Women's STEM, Matrix, the Northern Ireland Science Industry Panel, uh, for putting this important event together. We are having a ball. So. We are joined on stage now by Sean Farrell, who is Chief Scientific Officer at STEM Oxygen. Audience, round of applause. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, so, Sean, STEM, STEM Oxygen sounds amazing. Um, I, I, was, I was reading all about it. Um, so I want to talk a wee bit about your background in a minute. But first of all, can you, as simply as possible, explain what it's all about and, and what your role is? I love this challenge of condensing something scientific <laughs> down into a matter of sentences. <laughs> but anyway, look, uh, STEM Oxygen is a relatively new spin-out company from Ulster University Coleraine. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and what we do is we specialise in developing novel cancer treatments. That's our passion. And what our technology is, that is our front runner at the minute, is we develop the pH-responsive oxygen-generating nanoparticle. And that's important because tumours have really low levels of oxygen, mm -hmm. and that makes the efficacy of currently available treatments, such as radiotherapy, massively ineffective. So hypoxia is what we call low levels of oxygen at the tumour site. That can reduce the effects of radiotherapy by up to 300%. So our nanoparticle can be intravenously administered, goes to the tumour site, and it breaks down there and releases oxygen. And that's as simple as I can get it. <laughs> is it to make the therapy work better? Yeah. So right. So basically... basically, basically you're injected with a wee particle. A wee particle, tiny, a wee tiny, particle. tiny. I should do your pitch in the company. You should. <laughs> You're injected with a wee particle and it gives the tumour oxygen. Yep. And that makes it easier for treatment. Yep, depending okay. on what type of treatment. Now, radiotherapy relies on oxygen. So. Yes, okay, perfect. Okay, so what's your job in that? Are you sitting kind of giving the IV to people? Or, or you no, know, what is your, not, what's not your that, job? I'm not that good, unfortunately. No. Um, well. You know, when it, when it eventually gets to market and into the hospitals, it'll be the clinicians doing mm -hmm. the IVs, thankfully. I'm sure everybody's had a breath of relief there. <laughs> um, but no, my, um, I've, uh, at the earlier stages of my career, when I was a PhD uh, student, I was helping develop this technology mm -hmm. and doing a lot of formulation studies and in vitro and in vivo studies, which is just in cells and preclinical studies, basically. Um, and now I've been the one that's taken the technology and trying to commercialise it and get it out there in the world and get people to notice it and invest money in it. That's a big thing in science. Um, yeah, that's the difficult but, part. Exactly. But at the minute, I'm really just, we've, got, um, we've laid out a range of work packages and I'm overseeing the technical work packages and the commercialisation, mm -hmm. really. I'm just kind of running the show. That's all. You're just a big boss, basically. <laughs> just a boss. A big boss. Um, so you have, like... Tons of qualifications, obviously, you've mentioned there about your PhD. I was really interested when I was on STEM Oxygen's website, then obviously I was reading about you, and I was like, oh, she's a pharmacist? Like, I, for some reason, I just thought I hadn't computed with me that, <laughs> that it would be kind of pharmacology and things. That was, I found that so interesting. So how, now you have a different job, you're, you're, you're kind of big boss, you're kind of marketing, getting, bringing stuff to market and things. How important were your qualifications that you have, your, your pharmacy, your PhD training and developing, and your previous jobs that you've had? Because I assume you worked clinically for a while. I did, you yeah. know? So how did that all kind of, how important was that in, in your, your, your role now? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, because a lot of people in my position now have gone straight into like core science uh, mm -hmm. degrees. Um, being a pharmacist, first of all, gave me a chance to experience firsthand what these patients are going through. Oh, I spent yeah. a lot of my time on the oncology wards and in specialist aseptic services, actually making up the chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. um, 
So I get to see firsthand what they're experiencing and how I can now make a difference to their lives. Yeah. Like if we're able to push this technology right through to the clinic. So I think it's great that I have that insight, you know, from, from the lab. I got it from working at the bench with our little, our little pipettes and mm -hmm. chemicals. And then I've got it the first hand experience of seeing yeah. what people are going through. I actually I think that makes a difference. I actually hadn't considered that that point of view because I was thinking, oh, you must have worked clinical, but I hadn't actually thought about you maybe being on the oncology wards and kind of because it, it, it does make a difference seeing how people are affected yeah. and the human aspect of things. And sometimes I think if people don't realise in STEM that there's still the human connection. Mm -hmm. So, and what about um, obviously you, you did your pharmacy and things. What did you do at school to get into the pharmacy? So at school, I was <laughs> I was a bit of a jumble seal in my <laughs> coming up to my GCSEs. I just wanted to do everything. I just I I always it was like literally the opposite. I was like, can we choose nothing? Can we? <laughs> I just uh, can I do no subjects? <laughs> I just want to keep my options open, and I'm still very much like that, just in case. No, I just like I like I like to know everything. I like to be able to do everything. So, gosh, I think I uh, what were my A levels anyway? They were chemistry, biology. They're relevant. Mm -hmm. Music and Spanish. They're not. They're not. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, you can sell it to. What was I going to do? People be in Spain. Either be, be a scientist, be a translator. Or Spanish teacher, or be yes. a or Spanish musician. Musician, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is that, that's quite quite random, but it I, is. I think it's good. I always think doing humanities subjects alongside <coughs> STEM can only be helpful because it kind of gives you the full the full circle. Um, so anyone who's watching or listening, what can they do to improve the the prospects of getting a job in your kind of career? It's a good question. I mean, you definitely have to have the passion for mm -hmm. the field that that myself and my colleagues are in. There's a lot of hard work that goes into what we do. It can be very disheartening at, at times if things don't go right, and that yeah. happens a lot in the scientific industry. Mm -hmm. It really, really does. Not, you know, uh, and what is it they say, like 99% or 90% of startups fail? Yeah. So that's because you have to make sure what you're making is that there's actually a need for your product. So uh, basically what I'm trying to say is you, you, have to be, um, you have to be motivated. You have to be able to, if you get knocked down, get back up again. Um, yeah. You have to have a lot of resilience. Uh, but I think that comes with age as well. And, um, yeah. But, you know, knowing what you're getting yourself into is a big thing, I yeah. think. I but think well, it might be helpful for people today hearing, you know, from this point of view. And I think a lot of the, the startups fail as well. You know, they might have a good enough product, yeah. but it's the, it's the kind of keep them going. You know, oh, it's a marathon, not a yes, sprint. Yes, exactly. Um, so, so that's good for people to know. If, if, I think if you go with something that you're passionate about, you can't really run out of steam because yeah. you love it. You know. Um, so, in terms of the world uh, of work, do you feel that there's anything that maybe school and uni didn't really prepare you for? Yeah. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Everything. No, no, that's <laughs> not true. I think uh, if we break it down into the the two different yeah. compartments, there, school. I mean, school kind of forces you to choose quickly what you want to be, and it's hard mm -hmm. at that age. You're, it's difficult. Uh, that's why I try to keep my options open. Yeah. Um, I don't feel, I'd, I'd say, like, f school, in, well, the school I went to, and maybe a lot at the time, try to pressure you into go to uni, or it seems that way. Yeah. You know, there's other, there's other ways and means of getting to uni. If you want to do that and take your time, you know, you can go to tech, you can do access courses. Yeah. You don't have to, uh, s you know, at what to, what, put it in stone what you're, you're going to mm -hmm. be at the age of 16. Um, so I think that's one thing, you know, don't, don't panic by having to, having to have your life set out at the age of 16. Also, I would say, you know, if you're fairly confident of what you want to do and you're picking degrees or subjects to get yourself there, it's a really good idea as, like, as a school kid to go out into those workplaces and actually get a feel for what you're getting yourself yeah. into in the future. I know that school gives you like a week or two placement to go and do that, but it's not enough, you know? Yeah, what did it's you do for your placement? I, <laughs> I went to a dentist. You went to a dentist? Oh, oh, sorry. I was like, oh, for like, did you have like a new no. tooth out or something? I thought I, wanted, I thought I wanted to be a dentist. You thought you wanted to do dentistry? I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do. I really, really didn't. I really I couldn't didn't. Get, I couldn't get a placement, so I went to my mother's school and just sat there. Sure, it's something. You have to I, do something. I pretended I don't want to be a teacher, but I didn't. <laughs> no, I did. I went to a dentist. I thought I wanted to do dentistry. Turned out I didn't. Well, how you, you know, it is incredibly difficult to know. Do you know what I mean? It is yeah. really, but I think it's good for people to know that Regardless, obviously it's the subjects you choose are important to an extent to get into mm -hmm. university, but you can always kind of pivot in your career after mm. that, you know, because my undergraduate degree was speech and language therapy and I worked as a speech therapist and then randomly just left. I yeah. did something else. So <laughs> like, you, you, you totally can pivot, you know, totally. depending on what you're passionate about. Um, so today obviously it's called I Love My STEM Career. I don't know if you've heard me say that a few times, but um, 
I just wanted to ask you, cause your, your job's pretty nice, really interesting. What is the thing that you love most about your, your career? I mean, I love seeing something, a plan come together and seeing our technology work. See, the first time we saw that work, mm -hmm. it was amazing. See, when you get those results, you're just elated. It's just, it just lifts you and all the hard, it makes all the hard work and the, the knockbacks and the stints of depression worth it. Yeah, yeah. So that's amazing. I mean, you get such a reward. It's, it might not, be, it might not see, feel rewarding Very at times. Very inspiring. I uh, know. <laughs> I don't mean that. It a totally is kind of, I think, you know, when it is in technology or even if it's, it's in science, you're doing an experiment or whatever and you finally get the outcome you're looking for, it's like, oh, it's I've amazing. It. I've it's, made it. Oh, it's just amazing. It makes everything worthwhile. Especially if it is something so worthwhile where, where you're going to be helping people. I imagine that must feel incredible. I mean, yeah, that's, that's the, the ultimate goal is to get this into humans. Once we do that, well, once we do that, the value of the technology will boost significantly, mm -hmm. which is great. And, like, you know, a main thing of, for us to be able to get this to market is to get piles and piles of millions of investment in terms of money, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a really, really tough thing to do. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, it all comes down to money at the end of the day. But for me, yeah. once I get this through the trials and get it into the market, I'll, be, I'll, I'll know I've done my job and hopefully I've made a difference yeah. to people's lives. And that is the overall goal. Brilliant. Really? That's incredible. We'll pass a wee pin around the end, see if we can get any, <laughs> any donations. We need, a we'll bit more, we need about a million guys for the next <laughs> for the first uh, first human trial. So that girl there looks pretty loaded, so well <laughs> brilliant. Okay. Can we uh, can we get a round of applause for Sean? Thank you so much. Thank, <laughs> you. Thank you very much.